So suppose that the nearby Amber High School has 40% of their students on free reduced lunch. What does the least squares regression model, that's another way of saying the model, the line, what does it predict um, would pass the math test? What percent would it predict pass the math test? Okay, well we would use our line that we came up with. So remember the equation is y hat equals negative point, let me write it down, y hat equals negative point two eight three x plus 69.108. And so when they tell us Amber High School has this, what they're telling us is an x value, right? They're telling us that, hey, look at that. They've got x equals 40, well, 40%. Now, this gets a little tricky. Do you use 40%, to use 40, or do you use 0.4? And for that, you should go back to the table or the graph. You can see on the graph it's using percent, so it's using 10, 20, 30, 40. And same thing over here on the table. You can see it's using whole numbers. So that means that you want to as well. So use x equals 40 because of the table and the graph. And that's a good thing to note for your own studies. So make a really big note of that. Um, a lot of times students will think just by instinct, oh, I'm just going to use 0.4. No, no, no. 0.4 would not be appropriate here. So we're going to use x equals 40 because the table and the graph use whole numbers. Be sure to start. Make a note of it. That's a really easy mistake to make, right, to use a decimal when you shouldn't. Um, so we want to use a whole number. Okay, so that means that I'm going to go negative 0.283 times 40. Even though it's a percent, mathematically it's just terrible, but that's the way we're going to do this because that's the way the model was built. So negative 0.283 times 40 plus 69.108 because that table was full of whole numbers, not decimals. And so then I would just grab a calculator or grab Desmos. Um, the calculator is actually a little trickier because it's a negative in front. You have to use the little negative sign. So negative 0 0.283 and then you can either use times or you can use parentheses because parentheses is multiplication in this instance plus 69.108 enter and there you have it. If you don't have that calculator you can of course use Desmos. So it'd be um, negative 0.283 times 40 plus 69.108. Again, I could use parentheses or I could use times. Either way, I'm going to get 57.788. And it's, of course, an approximation because the whole thing is an approximation. <laughs> That's kind of how it works. Now, what is its unit? It's percent, right? It's actually the percent passing the math test, if you want to remember. Right, that's your guess. That's your prediction. All right, now, is Amber High School outside the scope of the model? Well, let's look back at the model. So here we have our model here. X equals 40 is right here. And that's right in the thick amongst all our data sets. That's interpolation. So no, X equals 40 is not outside the scope of the model x equals 70 would be outside the scope of the model. Um, x equals 0, we already said the y-intercept is outside the scope of the model, but 40 is not. Um, 40% is uh, right among all our given x values. from both the table and the graph, you can see it. So we have no problems with making that prediction. All right, now determine the residual. Okay, so that's a key word right there. We want to find the residual for Amber High School if they actually had 65% of their students passing the math test. Okay, so the residual formula, let me remind you, Residual is the observed 
y value minus the predicted y hat value. So in real life, we see it right here, in real life we have 65%. That's the real y. So you're going to put 65% right here. And then you're going to subtract your prediction, which your prediction was right here for part D, which was 57.788. And that was also a percent. Percent, for lack of a better term, it's acting sort of like our unit in this case, right? All right, so what would that be? 65 take away 57.788. and we get 7.212. And its unit would be percent, right? Technically it's percent passing math because it's a y value, right? It's that math test. That's the residual. Now what does that mean for Amber High School? How is Amber High School doing? Right? Is it doing well or is it doing poorly? That's the next question always want to make sure we interpret it and then find out what they're asking or, or answer what they're asking. So we expected, right, we predicted 57.788, but they have 65. So they're doing better than we expect. We expected only 57%, excuse me, 57% to be passing that math test. And they're 7.212% higher than we would expect. So Amber High School is doing well for a made-up high school. <laughs> Right, because um, the percent mass passing math test for the percent passing the math test, I, I can speak correct English, <laughs> percent passing the math test is 7.212% higher than expected. So they're doing well. All right, now suppose a local private high school wants to use the least scores regression model to make predictions as well. Why would that not be appropriate? Ah, so the key in that is that they're private high school. Now this entire data set was built from public high school, public school information. So let me underline that right here. So it says private high school right there. But if we go back to the problem, it mentioned right here that this was public school data. So it would not be appropriate because all our data were from public schools and they have completely different rules and regulations for how that would work. So it's not a question of being outside the scope of the model, it's a question of being unfairly representing yourself as um, or comparing yourself to local private schools. So our data set was comprised of only public schools. So it would be unfair um, for Amber, I should, uh, for this local, and this is not Amber, Amber was a made up one, I made up a public high school, Amber High School. So it would be unfair for this private high school um, to use this model as well. I mean, I can tell you from personal experience, I've been to private high schools. I, I went to one and I worked at one. Um, and they can kick out people that they don't want to deal with, right? That's the thing about high, private high schools. So private high schools um, do not have to put up with all sorts of students that they don't want to. So they have completely different rules and regulations. rules, regulations, etc. So it's unfair to compare.
and then that's a different problem from being outside the scope of the model, although it is, but it's, it's basically outside the scope of the data set. So it's like a completely different thing, right? So you, you can't compare apples to oranges. If you want to include private schools, then you have to start including all sorts of private high schools and maybe make a comparison that way.